Hey, how's it going? My name is Sean. I am father of four, so we have six people in our family. And, you know, we were comfortable and familiar with rooftop tents, but as we were looking for a solution as a family to get out and camp and be nimble and able to get off grid a little bit, we decided down the path of getting an adventure trailer. And that led us to FSR. And we bought their simple um, adventure trailer. And we've done a bunch of mods. So I want to just do a, I've had it for about a year, probably put about 10, 10 to 12,000 miles on it. And I just wanted to walk you through my experience with it, things that we've learned and some modifications that we've done to make it function uh, better for our family. Okay, and the vision and mission behind this trailer was keeping it simple, but having just enough things like to be comfortable and able to stay out for longer periods of time. We just got back from a two week um, road trip, camping trip out west, which is which really awesome. Um, so first, just some general things on the trailer. Trailers can be very expensive. Um, this trailer comes in definitely at the, kind of like the entry level price point. I think it's about $7,000 for the, for the box essentially. And it's really well made. I don't, I can't really complain at all about it. Like it stays dry inside. And this is not, you don't sleep in there. This is just for storage. So as you can imagine, if you have three or four kids, even two kids, depending on the size of your vehicle, a lightweight trailer can make a lot of sense to get all that gear out of the car, off your roof rack and into the trailer. So I think dry weight, these are like six to 700 pounds fitted out, geared out. I think this is probably, I'd say 13 to 1500 pounds. So still light enough for most average vehicles to tow. Um, it's got a Timbrin suspension, a 2000 pound rating overall. Um, and this has like the, the, I don't know if it's called the Overlander or the off-road package. So it added like these step plates, the front tongue box, like some of that stuff or, or platform came from FSR like that. Um, and again, it's just an empty shell. There's no power. There's regular trailer wiring. There's no trailer brakes on it um, from the factory. And so, but again, it's just a great, shell capable off-road i've had it off-road i haven't gone like hardcore rock crawling or will i but getting off colorado trails moab utah trails it gets so awesome and it tracks really well that's one of the most surprising things to me was how well it tows um this last trip we were doing 75 80 miles an hour maybe that's irresponsible but out in utah man the roads are wide open and it tracks great I do highly recommend rotating the tires um, every, probably every long trip, like every two to 3,000 miles, we found that like we needed to rotate the tires to keep them wearing evenly. That's been a really important thing. But yeah, low maintenance. There's a couple grease points. You, you gotta just do some basic stuff. And uh, this trailer is also outfitted with FSRs. Let's walk around here. These FSR. High Country Series 80 tent. Um, it's super roomy. Man, you can, it's like rated at, I think four people, but I've seen family, I have friends that have this tent that have like three little kids um, and they sleep five people up in here. It's the tri-layer, so it, it does, it really does help stay cool in the summer and warm in the winter. It's quiet, comfortable. This is a great tent, highly recommend it. So, and with a rooftop tent or like, you know, with a car with a tent or a, a small SUV in a tent and this, you really have a capacity to sleep five to six people in a very small, confined um, package. And I really like that it keeps you connected with the, with the outdoors. You know, not having like a giant 30 foot fifth wheel or whatever camper. It's nice, unzipping those windows, keeping the screens open, it's really cool. And it pairs well with the, uh, with the trailer. As you can see, the trailer has three doors on it, three equal size doors. Um, and there is a lip, so you can't really put a slide for a fridge. That's something I'm trying to figure out. Is it possible to get a fridge into this trailer? As of now, I leave the fridge in our vehicle, or but you can definitely get a cooler in there. 
The trailer's well set up. This is uh, came factory with Kenda mud terrains. I don't know if you really need mud terrains on a trailer. I would probably like prefer like an all terrain or something with a little better tread wear. Uh, but it does come with 31105 tires um, and decent ground clearance. I'm not sure exactly how much ground clearance, but I've never bottomed it out. Um, yeah, and it's overall just good, good tidy package. So let's get into some of the modifications and how we use it. So first, we love these front runner wolf packs. There's also like these alu box containers. Those are a really nice way to pack this thing. They fit in the door width wise. And uh, just so as you can see, we have like our coffee one, our cleaning one. We actually have a cooking one. Those are really nice in a trailer type of setup rather than just throwing, you don't wanna just throw stuff in there. So staying organized is important. Some of the modifications, uh, we added this five gallon jerry can. And what's great about this tray is it's got like, you know, not quite molly, but it's universal and you can easy to hook up toe straps and everything. So we keep this as fresh water. We added a 80 amp hour deep cycle battery. And we added a, a 10 pound propane tank. And that's this little tiny tank can two weeks, no problem. We have a hot water heater inside that'll show you. So heating hot water and operating the, the partner cook stove, um, not a problem. As you can see on the front here, we added an LED light. We also added a little spigot. This is just cold water, but it's nice to do dishes or just to have something to rinse off. Let's come on this side. Again, this is just an old, I inherited this from my dad. This is an old Coleman, like little tray stand. Works great. The cook partner stove is amazing. I keep both a uh, hose connector to go to the propane tank and also an adapter to go to those little portable, disposable propane tanks. Um, so that's nice. And we'll typically set up like a scottle or a discotta here. And we kind of set up a cooking area right here underneath the uh, awning. Speaking of the awning, I had this old Hannibal awning laying around and uh, with the rhino rack uh, crossbars, there was enough space to just, so we fabricated this little aluminum bracket. Kind of fun, kind of cool. When we were in Moab, we discovered that the leverage of this awning was a little bit much, so we found this sweet stick and it works perfect. So, this, so the stick has been with us now on all of our trips since then, works pretty good. I'll show you kind of some of the, the organization on the trailer that we do and some of, some of the other modifications. Here, we've added an LED light and these are actually really nice. Um, pretty simple, they cast a nice flood type of light on the fender. This fender is very handy. This kind of becomes our coffee making station when we camp. Here we have our water fill. So that's how you fill the 15 gallon onboard water tank. And because you always need a cup holder, little cup holder right here. <clears throat> Show you inside. Okay, so the 15 gallon water tank and, and the whole basically water system, I just ordered off parts off Amazon, a little bit of research. It wasn't that difficult and it was a really fun project. So right over the, like, the wheels, the center of the trailer sits the 15 gallon water tank. I typically, We'll try to leave it empty on long road trips. And in, in my opinion, you either want it like totally full or totally empty. We'll tend to leave it empty until we get close to where we're camping and then I'll fill it. And it fills pretty easy just with a garden hose. So this is the Alu box. I really like these. Compared to the Wolf Pack, here's a couple pros and cons. Wolf Packs are like 35, 40 bucks. So they're cheap, but they're not weatherproof. They're weather resistant and they're not dust proof, weatherproof. So, these alley boxes are more expensive. Little, they still nest well and stack well, but they are 100% waterproof and weatherproof. So that's, so this is like my go-to gear. So I don't typically pack anything on top of this. This is where I keep headlamps. This is all my headlamps. These are camp lights and my like hipster lights. Gotta have those. Um, matches, lighter, carabiner, paracord. Um, keep a knife, some lights, like this is just kind of stuff that I always want to be quick and easy to access. When you pull into camp late at night, you might slap a light on, get in here. We also put some interior lighting, I can show you that. I added some 
interior lighting, which really helps when it's late at night to not have to get that headlamp. Um, if you can come around here, I can show you the, how I made the switch panel. Okay, so we have this, I had this old Pelican case and I tried to figure out how do I put a switch panel that's easy to access, but also, you know, just kind of cool and, and, and usable. And so I, I modified this Pelican case to become a switch panel. And again, I just ordered these switches off Amazon, but we have a 12 volt kind of port, double USBs, and then a battery indicator. And this is set up to charge off of the battery. Well, it's set up to charge off of the alternator from the vehicle while we're driving, or I have a solar panel that I just hook up. And man, this battery, dude, it, it'll last weeks, uh, especially with a, a charge here and there with a the solar panel. Um, there's a fuse block, if you can see in here, I don't know if you can see that well, but that is the Camp Chef hot water heater and uh, debated whether it would be fine to mount it inside. I just make sure the doors are open, that there's nothing on top of it, but it works fine. It's really nice having a hot, hot water shower, pressurized hot water shower. But that's it, man, just a couple simple mods. Keeping the, the we keep the whole back two thirds for, it just gets storage. We have another alley box, that's like our kitchen cooking, another couple wolf packs. We keep our camp chairs, wetsuits. Um, I tend to keep sleeping bags and pillows in the vehicle because our kids, don't, you know, they kind of like them for added comfort. So this tends to be like specifically the camping gear. Another huge benefit toward an adventure trailer, especially with a small one like this, is it fits in the garage very easily. And um, you can leave your gear set up so it's just ready to go. So if on a whim you go hey, let's go to Colorado for the weekend. You can just hook up, pack some food, and get on the road. You don't have to um, take a day organizing gear. So if you're organized about how you put it away and being ready for the next trip, works really well. You might be asking, where is your table? Sure, like here at this little spot, we have a picnic table. Um, but oftentimes, you don't have access to that. So there's just enough space underneath here on the tent that we keep, um, this is an uh, easy on canine table um, that just slides right nice underneath there. So it's, and I'm actually gonna, my, one of my next mods is gonna be to double stack the table so I can actually have two tables. Cause what we do is we set one up under here for cooking and it'd be nice to have one for eating. So some people love adventure trailers. Some people hate them. Some people love rooftop tents, some people hate them. Everyone's got an opinion and there's no perfect solution to your kind of solving the problems uh, for your, you or your family. The big thing is getting things that help enable you to get out and camp more often because it's such a great thing to do. Um, overall quality of the FSR adventure trailer, I have no complaints. It is what it is. It's a simple platform when you purchase it. It's pretty, it comes at an entry level price and it's a high quality um, kitted out thing. You may, you know, my wife and I have talked about like the next level, like, man, would it be nice to have a fixed kitchen or a place to sleep, like a teardrop or square drop? That's been a fun conversation, but for now, this adventure trailer is fulfilling its need it enables us to do what we want to do. We have a lot of fun. It enables us to do things and get to places that we want to get. So thumbs up. If you pick one of these up, maybe you learn a couple things about some of the mods. Give it a shot. They're not hard to do. You don't need a, a professional shop to do it for you. You can just get in your garage, get some simple wiring tools, watch some YouTube videos. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, leave a comment. I'm happy to answer. And thanks for checking out the video.